All right, gang, we're live. We are live on YouTube, live on Instagram. I'm going to give people a second to show up, and then we're going to get into it here. I'm going to play a little bit, get us in the mood. Get us in the right mood here. Mm. folks welcome to the creative tools from drum and bass live streamed drum clinic we are going to get into some exciting stuff today the type of stuff i was just playing before we started is the the type of drumming that we're going to learn today just to give you you know what while we're uh while we're in it here hold on let me just turn things up a little bit boom ba doom So this is the type of drumming that we're going to get into today. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So this is the creative tools from Drum and Bass Drum Clinic. Why do I why did I title it like this? This is not a drum clinic where I'm my goal is to teach you to become a drum and bass drummer. I'm not particularly interested in being a drum and bass drummer myself. I don't play drum and bass gigs. Most people don't. But the drum and bass genre has some really useful and generalizable tools that we can use to be able to play a huge uh, uh, variety of creative grooves like this. So that's our plan today, is for me to give you uh, some immediately applicable uh, both patterns and methods so that you can extract these tools and apply them to your drumming immediately. So. Get into the plan a little bit here. Uh, well, before we get into the plan, actually, a couple quick announcements. First, um, everyone watching this clinic today can use the promo code New Beats on my website, jpbouvetmethod.com, for 30 days, a full month of free access. Why might you want to do that? Well, there's a course going on right now on the website called the Sort of Drum and Bass Course, where we take the concepts that we're going to basically have a crash course on right now in this clinic, and we do an in-depth, multi-week deep dive into them, right? So we go step by step in a way where I can virtually guarantee you're going to be able to use the concepts to explore creatively a functionally infinite variety of grooves in the style that I was just playing. So that is the drum and bass course. And anyone can pause me right now. The promo code is already live. You can go to jpbuvetmethod.com, sign up for a monthly subscription, put in the code NEWBEATS when you sign up, and you'll get 30 days of free access. You'll be charged nothing. And in that 30 days, if you decide it's not for you, you can bail, and you'll be charged nothing. But in the meantime, the other reason you might want to do this is that I am giving away a free 8-inch Byzance Brilliant Minel Splash Symbol. That looks like this. Personally, my favorite splash symbol, one that I've been using for a very long time. I'm not going to give you this one because I want it, but I'm going to send you a brand new one. How do you win a free minor splash symbol? Well, at the end of every course on jpbouvetmethod.com, I do a solo challenge where I ask students to send me a two or three minute video demonstrating their use 
of the materials that they mastered during the weeks of the course. We've been doing this for several courses now. It's a lot of people's favorite part. It's extremely good and healthy for your learning because a medium pressure challenge helps the, the concepts you've been working on solidify in your memory. When you submit it, you get free feedback from me, personalized feedback. You get access to a, a Zoom hang that's for participants only, which has been an absolute blast, where we hang, talk about the concept, take it further, and also just hang out and talk about whatever. And in this case, if you participate in the drum and bass course challenge on jpbmethod.com, I am going to select to I'm going to select one of the people who participates to win a free minor splash symbol. So all I want you to do, basically, is do these things that are very good for your learning, that are going to pretty much make sure that you take the concepts that we're going to have a crash course with today and integrate them way more deeply and integrate them in a way that, that creates an entire new setting of creative drumming in your vocabulary. And if you do those things, you might also win a free minor splash symbol along the way. So you can pause me at any time, put new beats in jpbuvetmethod.com and sign up today and I'll send you an email immediately, pretty much, and uh, tonight at least, maybe tomorrow morning, and uh, we'll talk about your goals and get you started. So without further ado, those are the announcements. Let's get into today's clinic creative topics or creative tools from drum and bass. Here's the schedule for the day. One, a couple essential patterns that you're going to, that are luckily very simple and that you're going to use for the rest of your life. Again, this is not a drum and bass clinic. I use these when I'm playing rock and roll. I use these when I'm playing funk. I use these when I'm playing jazz. They're just extremely useful patterns. Two, we're going to learn a new way of creating grooves. This is, again, a, an approach that we are taking from the drum and bass genre and we are going to maximize it for all its creative potential again in whatever genre you happen to play and in every genre you happen to play this will be extremely useful the third thing we're going to do is combine these first two elements the patterns and the new way of creating grooves and you're going to see basically the result being what I demonstrated at the beginning of this which sounds something like this <laughs> So let's get into it, folks. First, let's think about these essential patterns. They're going to look extremely simple. And actually, our formula for using them is also extremely simple. I did a poll on Instagram the other day and said, what's hard about drum and bass drumming? Half of people said knowing what to play. And the other half of people said the fact that it's fast and it's just hard to play fast enough. These patterns are the patterns that make it feel faster than it is. Right. So these patterns... They might take a little bit of practice to get under your fingers, but once they're there, they create the effect of it being fast when you're not really thinking or playing anything too fast. And this is good news for us. So let's take a look. Pattern one, the, the simple formula that we're going to use for these patterns is that they are triggered by backbeats. They're always, in this crash course, going to be triggered by backbeats. So when I'm playing a groove like... any of those snare drum accents, I can start one of these patterns. If I put the short pattern on that first backbeat, it would sound like. If I play the long pattern, right? And what you'll notice is, right, if we look at our right hand and what our left hand are doing here. Our right hand is doing a triple. We need the triple. Da 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 trying to get as much bang for your buck technique wise with a little bit of a down tap up. Down tap up down tap up. We're not going to take a technique a significant technique detour right now, but that's sort of what's going on in your mind. And then on the first one of those we've got the backbeat. And then it ends with another ghost note. So after the backbeat, we have got and we have these 
three ghost notes now that fill up the quarter note and that all we want them all to sound the same volume. Get it because a big part of the style that we're going to try to imitate here is one where we have a lot of solid ghost notes that are all sort of mixing together. And then these accents that pop out. So if I demonstrate that a little. Right, you've got this constant flow of ghost notes and the accents pop out. That's sort of the genius of these patterns is that they, they give you a lot of ghost notes for what is essentially a small pattern. And if you repeat this pattern, practice this pattern enough, it becomes like one item in your memory. And you just go, play the pattern. Short pattern. And you don't think, oh, right, both right, right, left. It all gets chunked into one item and you say, go on the backbeat. <laughs> Right? And as you work on the speed, they get pushed faster. But I really want to emphasize during this clinic that our, our, these patterns and everything we're going to learn today, they don't need speed in order to be cool. Right? So when I play everything that we're going to do today at a slower tempo, it sounds fantastic. And it actually gives me more room to come up with creative and interesting melodies. So if I go... Right? No one's listening to that thinking like, well, this would be cool if it were fast. This is the same exact vocabulary, the same exact method at a slower tempo in a different genre, and it sounds fantastic. So let's take the short pattern and actually apply it uh, to a couple grooves here. When we, we look, look at, at these examples, examples right, right here, here, I've stripped, stripped away all of the, all of the hi-hats, hats, all the ghost notes that we're going to play, and I've just given you the kick and snare accents because we always want to be thinking melodically. What is the melody of this groove? We need to see it and feel it and know it and be able to identify it so that when we're adding all this fancy stuff, we know that we're embellishing the melody of the groove. We're not, that helps us not thinking these, the, uh, these long strings of stickings that we're never going to remember on the spot. Because when we're drumming, when we're improvising, the arrival point of improvisation is one where you feel subjectively like you are thinking of melodies. You're not thinking of stickings, and you're certainly not thinking of 24 stickings in a row. This is why anyone who's teaching you drum fills, where it's just like a long sticking and you're memorizing the sticking, that's not imitating the final result of what it feels like to improvise, and that's not going to ultimately help you get to that point. So today we're thinking about melodies. If we look at the first example groove here, it's two measures long. As is often the case with these types of groups, the phrases are two measures. And if I sing the melody for you, and it's okay if you're not great at reading drum notation yet, we'll get there. Doom, cat, doom, doom, cat, doom, doom, cat, doom, doom, cat. Just follow along and try to match what, I, what you're hearing with what you're seeing. Doom, cat, doom, doom, cat, doom, doom, cat, doom, doom, cat, doom, cat, doom, doom, cat, doom, doom, cat, doom, doom, cat. If I play that as a groove. I think that unmuted. There we go. Now, the trick is, wherever you see an S notated over top on the notation, we're going to put the short pattern in. So now I plug in the short pattern. simple enough. We're following a simple formula. Every time there's a backbeat, we put a short pattern in. You don't have to play it fast. But you can play it fast. Right, so it does, when you play it fast, start to feel like the drum and bass genre, but when you play it slow, it still sounds good. So let's take a look at the second example we've got here. That's actually take a second and practice your melodic thinking. Right, sing this groove in your head. Sing that groove. I'm giving you five seconds.
All right. What does it sound like? Three, four. Dun dun ka, dun ka, boom, boom ka, dun dun ka, dun dun ka, dun ka, dun dun ka. Play it as a groove. Add the short patterns in where you see the S. Sing me this groove before you even play it. Here we go. All right, that's the short pattern. We're applying in the groove. These are taken from PDFs from the drum and bass course on my website. And what we do in the course, we, like, we're giving you a couple beats here. We give you way more practice, right? Again, this is a crash course, but the in-depth deep dive is the drum and bass course on the website. Okay, let's, let's take, take a, a look, look at, at the, the long pattern. pattern. Things, Things get a little interesting here melodically, but the long pattern itself is not conceptually hard to understand. understand. It, it is, is the, the short, short pattern. pattern. Plus, right, right left. Just, just an, an extra, extra couple, couple ghost notes. Ghost this thing needs to stop on muting, I'd say. Oh, here we go. Let's do this. There we go. There we go. So that's our long pattern. It takes up six sixteenth notes, which gives us a dotted quarter note, which gives us more space, which means we can do different things with the kick drum. This introduces different melodies because basically we're playing these long and short patterns until the next kick drum. So if we take a look at the first example here, sounds like this. Put the long pattern in where you see an L. And you've got a new melody. And when you see the parenthesis there in my kick drum, that's not because I think you should play it as a ghost note. This is just a notation trick I do with the courses on my website where I want you to play that kick drum every other time. And essentially what this does is double the length of the phrase, but it's also maybe the easiest, most low-hanging fruit trick that you, can, that you can remember to just extend your phrasing. Right? So if I play that, uh, I'll play it the second time. So first, uh, yeah, I'll play it every other time. Only the second time. Here we go. Three, four, boom. <laughs> right? Immediately doubles the length of your phrase. Immediately makes what you're doing seem more musical. And it's the easiest step you can possibly take. So... Um, here we go. Let's take a look at the second example on the page here. Take a second. What does this melody sound like? Sing it for me. This is good practice. Three, four, one, two. Here we go. Boom. Ka, I'm realizing this is this, this is the written out version of the first example, but we're going to stick with it because on this one, we're plugging in not only long patterns, but short patterns. So if I play the groove, pay attention to the long and short patterns over top, where they're going to land. I'm not going to put them in yet. Sounds like this. Three, four. I plug in the long and short patterns. Sounds like... So 
you can see how this starts to become, it starts to take grooves that are fairly common, fairly pedestrian, right? Doom, ka, doom, ka, doom, doom, ka, doom, ka. And it injects a bunch of ghost notes in all the time after every backbeat, which doesn't fill up every single ghost note, but it fills up a lot of them and enough of them to create this feeling of constant, forward moving, quick ghost notes as a layer. So, you might, however, be thinking of the limitations that we face here. Right now, every backbeat is on two and four. There are only so many things our kick drum can do, right? And around this two and four, and before long, everything starts to sound sort of the same, right? You start to be like, okay, sure, but I thought you said this was creating uh, the ability to play a wide variety of diverse grooves and improvise for minutes on end without it feeling boring and repetitive. That's where we need step two. So if we get step two, let's find step two. Boom, boom, boom. Step two is shifting to the upbeat. And this is where the grooves melodically become extremely cool. The patterns that I just taught you, they're very useful. You're going to use them for the rest of your life. This, however, is the thing, is the key that unlocks the door to creative grooving in a way that is, is genuinely, could be genuinely revolutionary for your drumming. If you're just joining, this is, you can use the code new beats at any point right now before Saturday night at midnight on jpvmethod.com. Dig way deeper into this concept and really pretty much guarantee to get these, these concepts under your fingers and to get you improvising in a hugely uh, uh, free way. Um, you can use the code new beats, sign up, it'll give you a free month. You can participate then in the drum solo challenge at the end of this course, the drum and bass course on my website. That will enter you into the chance to win a free minor splash symbol from someone I choose from the challenge participants. Um, so now we're diving into a bigger concept. All right, again, this is a crash course. I'm going to show you how this works, and some of you are going to be able to intuit it very quickly. Um, but for the deep dive, right? We need more than 20 minutes talking about it. We need examples. We need step by steps. That's where the course on jpbuvetmethod.com comes in and works week by week, example by example, in a very methodical way that essentially builds your, not only your freedom coordination wise, that's not most people's problem. Most people's problem is in here, in the ear and in the mind, the ability to hear these types of grooves, not only hear them, but think of them. Right? A lot of people can imitate interesting grooves but have trouble or draw blanks or play the same repetitive patterns when they're asked to think of them on the spot. And what is improvisation but thinking of unique and interesting melodies on the spot and deciding how to deliver them. So the trick of this course is teaching you to think of the interesting melodies and deliver them in the context of a drum and bass style groove. Okay, so let's get into topic two of this drum clinic. This is called shifting to the upbeat. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna have, we're gonna think in downbeats and upbeats. We're gonna think one, two. These are all downbeats. Down, 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 down. If I switch to the upbeats, all of a sudden, it sounds like this. Down, 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 up, 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 down, 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 up, up, down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, 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 down. I'm basically switching from the one, two, three, four to the one and, 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 and to the ands. Some people would say that's a displacement. They'd say that's a very complicated thing to do. You're taking the whole beat, doom, ka, doom, doom, ka, and you're displacing it, doom, ka, doom, doom, ka, doom, ka, doom, doom, ka, doom, ka. We're not at all going to think of it that way. That is far less useful than most people think because it it almost by definition confuses the listener and to a degree that doesn't sound good. We're going to move individual notes, one at a time, two at a time, and we're going to try to do it in a way explicitly that does not confuse the listener like explicit full measure displacement does. That's hard to do and almost useless musically. So that's what we're going to do. Take a look at this example here. We start with an extremely basic beat. We start with and 
we're going to start shifting one note at a time to the upbeat. We're going to end up with basically a drum and bass 101 groove. But again, we're not interested in learning drum and bass grooves. We're learning, we're interested in learning the approach that allows us to blow our uh, melodic potential out of the water uh, in, turn in a groove context. So take a look at the second line. We're going to move the backbeat that was on beat four to the end of four. We're moving it late. So it looks like one, two, three, and four, and Okay, everything else is the same. I should mention, if you're watching on Instagram, there's great overlays that demonstrate what's going on on the screen right now on YouTube, which would be a way better place to watch. But do as you will. Three, four, don't, da, don't, don't, up, boom, da, down, down, da, don't, da, don't, don't, da, boom, da, don't, don't, da. Take a look at line C, the third line. Now we're gonna move the kick drum that was on one in the second measure, back, just like we did with the last note, to the end of one. So now we have doom, ka, doom, doom, four, and one, and two. Boom, ka, boom, boom, two, cat, boom, ka. Here we go. Okay, it's starting to sound like that drum and bass groove, right? Let's take one more step. Let's take the next snare drum on the two of the second measure and push that back too. This is line D. You can see where the arrow pushes it back. So now we've got down, down, three, and four. Up, 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 down, down. So this is our first example of shifting all these notes to the upbeat. And this is a skill that you develop that is separate from looking at PDFs and looking at arrows move them. Right? And again, this is a crash course, but in the in-depth course on the website, we spend several lessons in a row developing this skill. Because what we need to be able to do as drummers, if we want to be able to improvise freely in this style, we need to be able to take some notes. Move them to the upbeat. Right here, we, we moved three notes in a row to the upbeat. And it actually ends up being four beats in a row when you count the kick drum that happens before now. So yeah, four beats in a row that switch to the upbeat in the middle of, of a two-bar phrase where everything else is really focused on the downbeat. That is the trick we are trying to learn. If I can learn that, it'll sound like this. And then with that, I actually now have infinite melodies that I can choose and control and let unfold in a constant manner. And then maybe we'll start applying the patterns. But first, but first, this is me now um, switching to the upbeat whenever I want. I'm gonna do it in a really mechanical way just for the sake of demonstration. But you're gonna see this the more I demonstrate it as the fundamental concept that we need to be able to, to control here. So here we go. I'm gonna keep time on my left foot so it's a little easier to hear. And I will play the hi-hat on the secondary hi-hat here. So we're going down, 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 up, 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 down, 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 up, 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 down, 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 up, 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 down, 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 up, 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 down, down, up, down, 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 up, 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 down, 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 up, up, down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, 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 down, 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 up, 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 down. do this you can see that I am playing kicks and snares mainly on quarter notes and I'm switching to the upbeat I'm trying to do it in a way that isn't confusing right but as you can see if maybe if I stop singing so mechanically along with it I actually have an enormous a truly infinite variety of grooves that I can now play if I stop singing and do the same thing sort of disguise what I'm doing well actually I'm not even gonna disguise it the same exact thing speed it up a little bit <laughs>
now we're talking freedom. Now we're talking, I can actually sit and play this group for a very long time and it's rewarding, it's fulfilling for me creatively, it's fulfilling for the audience. I can shape a solo out of this. I can play the drums for an hour and actually explore an interesting territory as opposed to recall what is that drum and bass 101 groove and play it and maybe come up with a couple little alterations. This is about creating an enormous subset of groove, uh, uh, of groove solo potential. Before we talk about integrating the patterns in with what we're doing, let's take a look at one more way to think about, a very subtly different way to think about shifting to the upbeat. That is the early backbeat. So, yeah. So, look, there's a couple examples here that we didn't do. If you want, you can pause it right there and play those. Doom, get it, doom, doom, get it, boom, get it, boom, boom, get it. But let's talk about the early backbeat first. So what we just did, remember we moved notes late. We said, okay, let's move the backbeat an eighth note late. Kick drum an eighth note late. Next note an eighth note late. In this case, we're actually sort of achieving the same thing, but we do need to account for this groove because it's extremely common in drum and bass. And it's a slightly different way of entering into the upbeats but it ends up being basically the same thing, and that's okay. So this is the early backbeat, and instead of, you know, before we went one, two, three, four, and we took the four and moved it to the end. Now I'm moving it to the three end. So early, so we're going one, two, three, end. One, two, three, end. One, two, three, end. So we play the first line here, that groove sounds like. One, two, three, end. One, two, three, end. Probably the second most common drum and bass groove. Sorry. Sorry. Um, so we're moving it early. If we look at the second line here, this groove sounds like. So you can hear that backbeat early. But then, and the reason I said that it's, it's, it's a different way to, to enter into the upbeats, but it kind of ends up being the same thing, is that once you enter into the upbeats, doom, ka, doom, ka, the, the upbeats, the fact that you're on upbeats feels exactly the same. But it is a, this is, again, I'm always trying to, to analyze what does it feel like to improvise in the moment? What is the mind of the, of the, of the uh, relatively proficient improviser? What does it feel like to do that freely? In this case, even though, again, I keep saying technically it's kind of the same thing, it feels different. And I oftentimes find myself in the middle of my playing going sort of in a flash thinking early backbeat. Early backbeat. Or late backbeat. So they're just upbeats at the end of the day, and you can put whatever you want on it. But this is a marker in my mind that I find myself using frequently. The early backbeat. Okay. So again, the second groove here looks like. So those are a couple ways to think about shifting to the upbeat. Let's think about how this all ties together because that's where we get this thing that sounds like the drum and bass grooves, but that opens up an enormous amount of potential. Because now, if we can shift to the upbeat in various ways, then all we need to do now, if you remember that those long and short patterns are triggered by backbeats, now we have backbeats, snare accents, that are all over the place. They don't have to be on two and four. We've developed the skill of moving them wherever we want. And we don't have to even adhere to like early and late backbeats. We can totally be just putting snare accents and kick accents wherever we want, downbeats or upbeats. Now that we can do that, we can just plug in the short and the long patterns and it'll sound like exactly what I was demonstrating at the beginning of this clinic. So let me first start playing with, um, without any of the short and long patterns. And then I'm going to do exactly the same melodic groove drumming. I'm going to add the short and long patterns, and you're going to see what the, how how the, that adding those 
flips it into the com a completely new place that imitates the drum and bass type of style. So here we go. One, two, here we go. And suddenly, we're there. Right? And just to give you a little bit of a sneak peek, a couple small tips here. In the course, the way we think about this approach, we develop the short patterns, the long patterns. We develop a few 101 grooves. Then we start developing what I just described and just showed you a little bit of, the ability to move to the upbeat in a major way. So then we get to that place that I just demonstrated, and then we've got the foundation thoroughly set, and we start looking at adaptations of the patterns. So instead of going, we can go, sorry, or we can go instead of, we can go, Um, or we can repeat the patterns. Or we can find other ways to repeat the patterns. You see, once the creative foundation is set with the basic melody making, the basic patterns, you can come up with adaptations forever. And that is the, that's the fun part where it becomes really easy to make it sound like you are never repeating an idea, even though you are. You're always repeating ideas. You're always repeating melodies. You're always repeating, repeating placements. You're always repeating patterns. But once you introduce enough variations, alternate stickings, alternate dynamics of the same pattern, then the world is your oyster. And no one will ever be able to figure out how simple the thoughts are that you are thinking in your head while you create this infinite variety on the drum set. So, I'm going to play you out with a little solo. Before I do, in case you're joining late or in case you missed the memo, anyone watching this can right now and anytime before Saturday at midnight this week uh, enter the code NEWBEATS in at jpbouvetmethod.com. This was a crash course. That code's going to give you a full free month to access the full course. Right now we're on lesson five. There are going to be several more lessons. It's gonna give you a chance to get caught up and to dive deep into this, and blow your creative groove playing up to another level. And then at the end of that course, participate in the creative, sorry, the groove solo challenge that I'm hosting at the end of the course for JP Bouvet Method students only. That's gonna give you personalized feedback from me on what you submit it's a cr it's a two to three minute s not even solo demonstration of you using the concepts that you've mastered in the course you get personalized feedback from me on that you join the participant only zoom hang clinic where we talk about more stuff this is small group stuff at that point so we really are able to get into it and basically just hang and you're going to be entered in the oh well i'm going to choose from one of the challenge participants one person to win an eight inch minor byzance brilliant splash symbol personally my favorite splash symbol from them and uh that's that so new beats throw it in right when you're done with this on the website for 30 months free 30 months 30 days free and i will see you there in the meantime i'm going to play a little drum solo demonstrating the concepts that we talked about today and demonstrating the concepts that you can get into deeper once you get into the course on the website. All right, I'll see you there. Here we go.